Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on WakeUpCallDT.com, your one-stop sports shop, and on MixLR.com backslash WakeUpCallDT. It is always my honor and my privilege to speak with the Atlantic Coast Conference Commissioner John Swafford. He has been no stranger to the broadcast over the years, and my time with him is always very valued on my end, and I appreciate it very much. So with that being said, John, how are we doing today? Dan, I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you are. I'm doing very well. And, and, and John, i got to ask you here, obviously Clemson is you know, doing what many imagine they're supposed to do from year to year which is being the top four in the nation and be going up for the ACC championship game, which is coming up here. Just what you could say about what Dabo Sweeney has done. I mean, you've been around this world of the ACC for a long time in many different ways. Just what Clemson was before him and what they've become with him over the years. Well, obviously, you know, in past years, Clemson... uh Going back to a good while, it has a very rich football tradition, but uh, Dabo has taken it to another, to another level. I don't think there's any question about that. And he, he's uh, he, he's done it, and uh, as best I can tell, in all the right ways. Uh, recruited extraordinarily well. Uh, you know, plays an exciting kind of football. His players seem to have a lot of fun playing the game. The graduation rates are excellent. And uh, you know, when Dabo was hired, uh, he hadn't even been a coordinator. He was a wide receivers coach. And uh, he's a very positive individual who, who represents the game in Clemson and, uh, and the ACC extraordinarily well and, and uh, seems to have all of the right values. Uh, as well as wins a lot of games and, and has developed uh, a consistency that has brought Clemson to one of the very top uh, uh, football programs in college football year to year uh, and has set another standard at, at Clemson that uh, as good as their history has, had been, it, uh, it's, at a, it's at a different standard in today's world. And when we look at uh, one, something that he has that I had the opportunity to speak with him about at ACC Media Day going into the season is his deep faith, his very strong and uh, unafraid to talk about faith. Just what you can say about the uh, the man that is Dabo Sweeney, the time that you've gotten to spend with him, and, and just the, the faith that he has. He's, he's unafraid to talk about God. He's unafraid to say what he's thankful for, and that's gone a long way with me. Just what you can say about about, you know how he is the way he is and unafraid and unapologetic to be who he is well I think I think you've summarized it extremely well he uh, he's very committed to his faith he, he talks about it he lives it uh, more even more importantly than talking about it he, he lives it and uh, uh, I think that has a great deal to do with his uh, leadership capabilities with some of the struggles that uh, he went through uh, to get to where he is today, both personally and, and the Clemson football firm. Um, I think he does a wonderful job because of that faith of keeping the game itself in perspective. And, and when things, uh, you know, do go haywire, I mean, I, I can remember being at the Orange Bowl and watching Clemson play West Virginia and West Virginia put 70 points or so on Clemson in the Orange Bowl, and yet, uh, you know, Dabo's positiveness and, and commitment to doing the way, doing things the way he wants to do them, and with the, those kinds of values, uh, he never veered from that, and so he's uh, he's a real leader, and a leader of, of men, and, and uh, as you say, uh, has uh, no uh, problem at all. Uh, giving his his faith, uh, you know, gr- tremendous credit in terms of of uh, what he's accomplished because his his faith has so much to do with who he is and what he is. Speaking here with the commissioner of the ACC, John Swafford, and as I said, a no stranger to the broadcast. Always appreciate having you on, John. Dabo Sweeney wins ACC Coach of the Year this year. He goes a perfect 8-0 and inside of the conference, 12-0 and overall, and obviously in high regards for the college football playoff 
as we move forward and playing in the ACC championship game. But right behind him is a team that was picked to finish seventh in the Atlantic, which is Syracuse. They finished nine and three overall. They won numerous games, six and two inside of the conference, losing to only Clemson and Pittsburgh, who are both playing in the ACC championship game. It's the first time that Dino Babers has a winning season and three tries at Syracuse. First nine win season at least since 2001. First 4 0 start since 1991. On top of that, first time in both the AP and the coaches' poll in 17 years together. First time in the college football playoff poll ever, yet Dino doesn't end up getting the ACC Coach of the Year. How difficult do you think the decision was this year with Dabo being Dabo and doing what he does, but then Dino Babers with that long list of things that they've accomplished at Syracuse, how difficult is it to give the ACC Coach of the Year to one but not the other? Well, I think you'd have to ask each individual voter uh, you know, about that. that would- I certainly didn't have a vote, nor does anyone in the ACC office that is uh, media and and coach-driven. But, uh, you know, you couldn't go wrong with either of those gentlemen and the jobs they have done. And obviously, uh, Dino is building uh, a program and and rebuilding the the great tradition that is at Syracuse and in the sport of football. Uh, and Dabo is now at a point where he's maintaining. Um, so I, I guess that the, you, I guess it depends really on uh, which priority you put before the other um, in terms of from a voter's point of view. And obviously, different people would have different views of that. So, uh, but both of them. Uh, are tremendously well deserving and and uh, and tremendous years uh, with with different circumstances. You look at the ACC and and everything it has been over time in the realignment, John. You you decide to bring in Notre Dame for everything except for except for football, obviously, and then bringing in Louisville and Pittsburgh and Syracuse. Just what you could say about, I mean, this year and, and what it's become with having Pittsburgh leading the Coastal Division and Syracuse second in the Atlantic Division, we're seeing two former Big East teams right at the top of their respective divisions inside of the ACC within the top two. Just what that means to you, hindsight being 2020 and bringing in schools like that to the ACC. Well, it uh, you know it's good to see. I mean, it, it, I'm not surprised at all uh, by it because I, I felt like all along that we were uh, we were strengthening our league uh, all the way around uh, by bringing in uh, Syracuse and and, uh, and Louisville and Pitt, Boston College, and Miami uh, over a period of, of time. And I, I think it's given us tremendous depth. The most we've ever had uh, in all of our sports, and particularly in football. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not surprised by it. I'm, I felt like that the, new, the newer schools would integrate into this league uh, competitively uh, very, very well, and, and, and that generally has, uh, has has been the case. Uh, you know, historically. Syracuse has more wins in football than any other program in the Atlanta Coast Conference. Uh, and Pitt has more players in the College Football Hall of Fame than any other program in the Atlanta Coast Conference. So uh, the foundation has been at those those two schools in, in, in football for a long time. And uh, certainly you, you have great moments over the years from Boston College and, and obviously Miami with those national champions. And, and Louisville has been uh, an overall athletic program that's been on a very strong upward trajectory for, for a long, long time. So uh, I think when you combine those schools with uh, the existing Atlantic Coast Conference schools that were uh, that were here, I, 
I think we've been able to mesh all of that very, very successfully, and uh, uh, and that's a credit to uh, to our schools. But uh, that geographic footprint, the competitiveness of the programs, the population within that footprint, uh, and the quality of the institutions in general has uh, just given us more opportunities than we would have ever had as a smaller, you know, nine-member conference or even a 12-member conference. So uh, I think it's been tremendously successful, and, and we're very, very pleased with it. So looking at that, like you were saying, hindsight being 2020 and bringing in the schools that you decided to bring in, and like you said, you're not surprised at the successes that they're having. What does it do for you as a commissioner to see that, you know, with a conference that is so, you know, Virginia heavy and North Carolina heavy and South Carolina and whatnot and, and the state of Florida to see those Northeast schools really start to make their mark inside of the ACC? Well, I think, Dan, I think it's good to see because it, it really solidifies uh, the decisions that uh, our schools make uh, in regard to expansion. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't have expanded if we didn't feel like that uh, those were the right decisions, but to see it play out the way it's playing out and, and uh, it is very gratifying for the entire league and, and I think just continues to strengthen uh, who and what the Atlantic Coast Conference is and, and what it means. And I think the more successes that the Northeastern schools have in, uh, in the league, uh, then the more uh, optically people will realize that, that the ACC is, is the entire eastern seaboard, basically. And, uh, and that's a good thing. I, I think you, you build identity and you build rivalries through playing each other, and, uh, and it takes a few years to do that. And I think, that's, uh, I think we're seeing now that people... Uh, very quickly know that the ACC is, uh, uh, first of all, a, a large geographic footprint and that uh, uh, the identity of the newer schools is more and more tied into the ACC. And, and when those schools have uh, some ongoing successes in the league, uh, then I think that accelerates that, that identity process, if you will. And coming from ACC Commissioner John Swafford. John, this season in the football side of things has seen a little bit of a change. Louisville, in my opinion, was going to struggle, obviously somewhat with Lamar Jackson moving forward, but they did not win a game inside of the conference, went 0-8, only won two games in 12 tries. Bobby Petrino gets fired. Larry Fedora finishes in the bottom two of the ACC this year. He gets let go. Mac Brown comes into North Carolina once again. We see Florida State dip. We see Clemson do what they're supposed to do, but Pittsburgh rises, Syracuse rises, Virginia Tech has some tough points. Virginia gets better. Just, just what you could say about you know what this season has really shown you because the teams that are always supposed to be good have faltered, or maybe some of those teams that were upticking have had some tough moments, and yet those other teams that were in the basement have been climbing out of the basement in a big way. So we've really seen in the Atlantic and in the Coastal Division a shakeup, which has got to be exciting as commissioner to know that these divisions are really – not just spoken for, so to speak, anymore outside of Clemson and what they've been doing, that it's anybody's game in the Coastal and the Atlantic Division, that fight for second place was between a lot of different teams all the way up to the end of the season. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it, it, it's really interesting to, uh, to watch it. I, I think we all realize if you're in college athletics, there are going to be some, uh, some cycles. Uh, you know, programs are sick cyclical, at least most of them, um, and I think what it really shows is the competitiveness of, of, of the league, and that it's it's uh, it's tough to, uh, to if you're if you're good, it's tough to maintain that, uh, and and if you have a down year or two, or uh, then you can you can get up off the off the ground and come back. So um, it was very unpredictable. Uh, this year, aside from uh, from Clemson, and like you say, it's uh, 
uh, you know, there are schools uh, led by Syracuse that uh, uh, really uh, rose closer to the top um, in the championship game for the first time uh, since they've been in, in the league. And um, so it, it's uh, it, it's good to see uh, because it, it shows tremendous competition within within the league, and, and I think it accentuates what it takes to, to win – uh, consistently uh, in ACC football, I, you know we've we've known that and had that for years in basketball, uh, and now I think we're seeing it in in football. The Mac Brown return to North Carolina. Obviously, he had a lot of success in North Carolina. Had a lot of success everywhere he had been. He would take some time to build a program, and, and you know, like any any coach, you know, needs to, and then would have that success. He's back at North Carolina. It, almost as soon as Larry Fedora was let go, Mac Brown was brought in. Just what you could say about the return of Mac Brown to North Carolina, what it does for the conference, and and what's your overall thoughts on on seeing a coach return? Like you said, things are cyclical in sports. Well, this is the definition of cyclical with his return to the Tar Heels. I think any time uh, you you have a a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, come into your your league uh it's a real positive what, whatever the sport uh there aren't a lot of uh uh active coaches that that are in the hall of fame and mac of course is going going in uh this year into the college football hall of fame so and he's been there before he's had success uh he he knows the uh that university and what it takes to be successful there uh, so i'll be surprised if he if he doesn't do uh, an excellent job there and uh, the league is different than than uh, when matt coached at carolina obviously it's much it's larger number one where you have divisions number two uh and top to bottom it's more competitive uh number three so uh there's a lot of familiarity and yet it's a uh, it's a new game, so to speak, than it was when Mac was there earlier. But Mac is uh, a very positive uh, person. Uh, he, he's been to the pinnacle, having won a national championship at Texas, and he uh, built that program into at North Carolina when he was previously there into a uh, the last part of his tenure, uh, a top 20 program uh, and a consistent top 20 program. So uh, they moved quickly, and, and uh, it's good to have Mac uh, back in the league because I think, it, I think it is a real positive for the ACC. Louisville is looking for a leadership. We spoke on the other teams that came in from the old Big East in, in Pittsburgh and Syracuse. What are your thoughts on, on Louisville moving forward? Obviously, Petrino had been, in his return to Louisville, had been with the team for a few years. They ultimately decided that they wanted to move in another direction. They're reeling from the loss of Lamar Jackson from a season ago when he went to the NFL. What are your thoughts on, on Louisville moving forward as they look for leadership at quarterback, at head coach, and so on and so forth? Well, I, I think Louisville has an awfully lot of upside. Uh, it, it's a program that's been on an upward trajectory for uh, the last 15 years and, and, and uh, across the board. Uh, from a facility standpoint and from a competitive standpoint, they, they've uh, been through some uh, – you know, NCAA issues more related to the basketball program that they have dealt with and changed coaches there. Um, they've just finished a, a stadium renovation. Uh, so, I, you know, I think everything is in place for Louisville to, to return uh, to that higher level of, of, of football competition and, and, and probably return there pretty quickly. So... Uh, it's going to be a, an excellent opportunity for for someone to to come in and uh, turn that program back around. The other team coming from the Big East, Notre Dame, in all sports but football. Even though they're not part of the ACC football conference, they're a part of the ACC in every other way. So when you see Notre Dame successes and you see what Brian Kelly's doing, and you know being in the college football playoff top four. And and you know looking to lock in that spot and hold on to that. Does the conference or do you as the commissioner take 
some positivity out of that. I mean, even though it's it, they're not connected football-wise, because they are a member of the ACC in all other ways, how how is that connection? And and do you get to you know reap the benefits or or appreciate the successes of Notre Dame football in some way as as part of the ACC? Well, I think it's a positive for the ACC uh, for for Notre Dame to be uh, to have the kind of year they're having this year because uh, you know we're, our teams play them five times uh, on average per year, and uh, you know the college football fans want to see Notre Dame play, particularly when they're really good, um, and that fills stadiums and and. Uh, uh, we benefit from that. We benefit from uh, the television ratings of those games because TV is ours when they play in our stadiums. And uh, and just the general relationship, which is a very good one. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, I think, Dan, it is a positive for the, for the league uh, to see Notre Dame do as, as well as they have done this year. And... and uh, uh, there's there's definitely a, a, you know in a, a positive effect from a league standpoint uh, with ACC football uh, as well as overall because uh, the Notre Dame brand is is such a uh, a prominent one uh, nationally and as it's associated with the ACC uh, that's a good thing and I think it's a good thing for both I think it's good for Notre Dame without question and. Um, and I think it's uh, it's good for the ACC as well. Speaking here with ACC Commissioner John Swafford on Wake Up Call with Dan Satora. Two final points, John. Uh, to go back to Syracuse, Eric Dungy, he has not been able to finish the season for his first three seasons at Syracuse due to injury. This time, second to last game against Notre Dame, he gets back spasms, he's in the hospital. He ends up playing in the game. Six touchdowns, three passing, three rushing. The man has set records. He's looking to set more. He tries to hurdle at least one person a season, and he was able to finally finish the regular season as he heads to his first ever bowl game. Just what you could say about the talent of Eric Dungy, and and if you and I know you're commissioner of a collegiate conference, but if the NFL should look to a guy like him and give somebody like him a chance, in your opinion. Well, I would I would think and hope that he would have the chance uh, because he's uh, he, he's a winner and he's a competitor and uh, he has uh, shown a lot of toughness, a lot of courage, uh, in addition to a lot of talent. Um, and you don't show those things unless you have character. So uh, he's been a special player uh, in the ACC and has obviously had a great deal to do with the. The Syracuse uh, resurgence, and I, I just hated that he got got hurt so early, or got hurt at all, but particularly so early in the Notre Dame game, because I, I think that game probably would have looked a little different uh, had he been able to co- compete the entire game. Uh, so I hate that we all didn't get to see to see that. But uh, what a remarkable football player he is! And my final point is is the autonomous five, the power five. Power Five, a media designation, the Autonomous Five, the legal designation. But just what you can say about how it's been so far to be in the, you know, be the ACC inside of this Autonomous Power Five with the Pac-12, the Big 12, the Big 10, and the SEC. Just how you've taken it. Obviously, the ACC is getting a lot of respect in the college football playoff and in the rankings and the opportunities there. So just how you've seen it kind of shake out on and off the field, on and off the court, with what you're trying to do as an autonomous group? Yeah, you know, I think it's gone well. Uh, obviously, uh, the most significant thing that we've been able to do is, is to go to full cost of attendance uh, with the scholarships and, and uh, provide uh, more that, uh, for our student-athletes. and. Uh, so that's the most most obvious, and certainly uh, uh, those five conferences belong together because it's, it, and, and we should have uh, some space to to do some things that resource wise we can do that maybe others can't do in the NCAA. Uh, so I, I think it's uh, I think it's worked very well so far, Dan. I think we. Uh, 
are, are learning how to utilize the new NCAA process uh, with it. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think it's been uh, definitely a positive, and uh, I think we'll need to continue to learn how to use uh, and utilize uh, the structure within the NCAA that gives us that autonomy. And I, and I think it's brought the five conferences closer together. Is there ever a, a quick follow-up to that? Is is there ever a thought that, I know we've talked about a little bit before, that the American Athletic Conference and, you know, that has a school like UCF who's gone undefeated for two years despite a coaching change, do you ever as a group think about adding another conference? Does the American entice you? I mean, do you have respect for, for them? Because I know that they, they pitch the Power Six motif. Do you ever look at that and, and, and give some credence to the Power Six and to the American Athletic Conference? Well, I mean, uh, certainly there's respect for, uh, for the American Athletic Conference as well as others, the other conferences that are, that are FBS. Uh, but the, the distinction uh, was drawn in terms of, of uh, uh, competitiveness uh, historically. Uh, attendance at, at, uh, at games, revenues generated, uh, total and, and by media contracts. Uh, and, and there's still a, a significant distinction there along a lot of those lines uh, between uh, the, the five, uh, the power five, if you will, and, the, and then the next five. But we also uh, work well together as as the ten members of uh, of the FBS, but I don't I don't see that uh, current setup changing uh, from a conference standpoint uh, anytime soon. Now, coming from ACC Commissioner John Swafford, John, as always, I appreciate it. I wish you the happiest of holidays, and whether it's face-to-face or over the phone, I, I thank you for the time that you've given me and, and the respect um, both sides, you know, that goes both ways. So thank you for everything that you've done, and, and I appreciate the fact that you're the head of the ACC. So thank you for that. Thanks, Dan. Good to be with you, as always.